straight up to the... The hunger case for me. For Timothy? I'm for Patrick. Fix. No, I'm joking. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a fascinating spot. Oh. And as we see, uh, Marcel... <laughs> it's terrible when we have kings, this thing's happening. What's up, poker fans? Welcome back to another Black Cash Poker video, where we bring you the best highlights and moments of the most entertaining poker events. Before getting into it, we would like to ask you guys to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy our videos, as your support is allowing us to continue posting videos consistently. I'm sure he knew exactly how many chips he had, given they've just stopped the final table and, uh, and Dietrich hasn't played a hand yet. Now, I like this play for Big Tony. It's uh, obviously... In most situations, you would shove uh, with uh, a 10 big blind stack. But everybody's playing so tight, he has elected to raise 350. Mustafa is going to make the call. King Queen suited. Surprised he didn't isolate there. Looking at uh, Big Tony's stack size. This is the problem, though, with just small raising with the 8 seat. He does invite action. If he jam there, it puts Mustafa in a much tougher position, having the call with all the other players behind him. Mustafa, with a hand that flops so well, electing not to 3-bet and maybe invite the pot to go multi-way. Really slightly, slightly curious as to Big Tony, why Big Tony hasn't just jammed all in. Well, I have a... A theory. <laughs> in in most tournament situations, a, a lower buy-in. That's exactly what a player would do with ten big blinds. Um, I just think that the way the first few hands have gone, he just felt that that was the best way to play it. Well, I think now, it's going to. He's come unstuck, here. obviously, <laughs> because uh, through Mustafa just flat in, it's allowed uh, Timothy in on the big blind, and he's flopped top pair. He's going nowhere. Two point five million in the middle. He's just checking. Yeah, I've got a nine. Makes the call. He will be our eighth place finisher. No help on the turn. And no help on the river, so finishing in eighth place. Big Tony from Italy. We are down to seven on the true bubble. <laughs> Next player out receives nothing. We were near too close to the end. Ha! And uh, here we go again. But this, I think he's going to shove again and get called this time. Yeah, they won't get this one through. It's like 3.2. Pardon? To get an exact count. And uh, obviously, yeah. Timothy making sure, but yeah, he can't fold. Yeah. Okay, eights versus sixes. Timothy took out Big Tony, who had eights, with his king nine. And is he now going to win with eights against Patrick and Tony's sixes? But he said also six, six and uh, yeah, as I say, without a six here, Patrick will be the bubble boy. <laughs> and Timothy will take a commanding chip lead if he was to hold him in the spot. Of course, Patrick, the one man, a bit less phased by the bubble. Felipe, you actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. you actually rooting for someone. Myself? Yeah. So if you no help on the flop. <laughs> Can hear the other players quietly railing for Timothy. I'm rooting for Patrick. Fix. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Love you, bro. Back to diamond, right? Still no help. Unless it's a six, Patrick will be the bubble boy. Uh, no help on the river, and we lose Patrick Antonius in seventh place. We are now in the money. All six players will get paid today. 130,000 for the next player out. And uh, I'm sure Patrick will be a little bit disappointed there. Haven't played so well to make this 50k Super High Roller final after winning the very first 25k. As uh, James said, first tournament we've played this year, and he won it. Winning uh, 425,000. Ah, Timothy's got ace-8 suited behind. See, he, he asked for a count and then instantly looked at Mustafa trying to get a read to see if he's interested in the spot. Far more concerned about Mustafa than, than Dietrich. He makes the call. 
Mustafa folds 10 7 of hearts. Oh, bad news for Dietrich. Okay, so is Dietrich Fast going to be our sixth place finisher? And a complete nothing flop for both players. So Dietrich left with just the seven to hit. And if he doesn't hit it, he will be the sixth place finisher. Um, felt even. Well, it's, but sorry, he does have a, a few split outs. It? If it was a pair of the three or the five. He does not, and we will lose Secret in sixth place. And that further moves Timothy up the leaderboard, or further improves his chip lead, I should say. Huge 18 million chip stack now. Of course, only. 47 million in play. Each player started with a million chips. So this uh, final table has been going for only 30 minutes, and we've already lost three players. Dietrich Fast from Germany there, eliminated in sixth, and he's won 130,000. Doesn't look too unhappy. He came to the final table, uh, second short stack, three million chips, and he's managed to leave this tournament in profit. Now, what's Tobias Sigler going to do with the big blind? Jack 10, he'll defend. We're seeing how, uh, how many hands Timothy would like to play now, opening it up with the 7-3 suited. Really as well putting Mustafa in spots. They can't play many hands in the small blind with the stack sizes the way they are. A big nice, nice flop, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big big flop to Tobias. Timothy with a backdoor stroke down, backdoor flush draw. I said big flop, he has Jack High, but he'll feel good about that one. Question for Timothy of whether to see bet here. Again, he knows the kind of hand Tobias is going to be calling with from the big blind. And this might be a board that he's connected with. And he does wisely check back. But an interesting turn is he picks up a flush draw. And Tobias, he may think he's ahead, but he also knows that he can bluff Timothy off King High, Queen High, Ace High at this point. So. Hard to see him not taking a stab here. Mm, I think it'll go check, check. Longer he takes, you might be right. <laughs> 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 and you are. <laughs> I think it is so uh, horrible having to check call with Jack Kai or potentially lose to Queen or King Ha on the river at showdown. It would it would imply he has a is a hand that maybe a, a weak one pair hand or a si maybe he can bluff the river but it looks like he's coming out with a raise here. Really putting pressure on Tobias. He knows Tobias is going to stab that turn card with a whole host of hands. So he's decided to pop it up. Interesting though, it doesn't represent that many nines. There aren't many nines. He would have checked back on the flop. So an interesting play for sure. So Bas will be suspicious, but maybe thinking this isn't the spot for me. I've got a good stack. A better situation may arise. I have Jack High. Okay. And that is what he does. Yeah, great play from Timothy there. That's why these guys are set playing this final take. Wishing that Michael or Felipe had found something to jam it in with. They didn't. And Mustafa will defend with the, the dreaded ace from the big blind. It's terrible. Oh. And as we see, uh, Marcel. <laughs> it's terrible. But we have kings. These things happening. And how do you proceed here with, with pocket kings in, in this situation? It's like you feel slaughtered already. <laughs> you get a call and then somebody calls. And the ace comes on the board. That's your nightmare. And would you, on a, on a ball like this, would you look to maybe bet to protect your hand? Or would you be happy checking well, it back? I probably would bet it, but that's why I'm sitting here. I'm <laughs> sitting on the table in the final. <laughs> electing to check a second time with his ace. So it's uh, allowing him to bluff, but also protecting himself yes. if he's up against a better hand. Okay. <laughs> 
He's okay with Jack Jack and see if he's having the best yeah. hand. But he don't want to lose his whole stack in his Sure. He can bet now, even when he thinks he might have queens. He can bet with the ace now, because it's a value bet. He's most sure. likely not having queens. Yeah, so you, you bet here, hoping king. maybe up against a hand like king-queen. Queen he jack. will never get the re-raise. Very awkward for Tobias, right? Having yeah, it's the feel. It's it's how if he calls with an ace to hit the ace, I'm mean, neither go on the end trying to get something more out of it. Uh. Ace and Tobias does make the call. Finds out the bad news. You have a 100 shot. 100 shot. Nice try. Tobias trying to call uh, with 100,000 like that. <laughs> Every little helps, right? <laughs> He straight up to the the, hundred case the, the side where you can hang, hold yourself and pull yourself up. He did it a couple of times, looked around, and he walked out again. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if he wins this tournament, it may become the, it may become the workout of choice for players yeah, before a final uh, table. Well, I try to do the same. I go in and stay a little bit longer. And just think it helps, and then. Well, this this looks like trouble for Felipe. Yeah. The stuff of raising it up. With ace queen under the gun, Felipe with under 20 big blinds and ace jack. It's hard to see him doing anything but going all in here. He probably is going to shove. But and this is great news for Michael. Hold on. It's really a setup, isn't it? How much is it? It's I've had that. Stuff I will ask for a count, but I'll see it's short stack. You don't see him fall there. No. But Felipe's probably uh, loving life when he gets asked for a count. He's thinking they're on. Oh, yeah, he, think he's he thinks he's the best hand. 39, 3 million, 980. He might end up with the best hand. <laughs> Crying call with wow. the best hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised Mustafa hasn't well, called already. He knows how tight he plays. Right. And he but has called. Still, you still cannot fault. And uh, Felipe sees the bad news. Unless he makes a jack, a straight or a flush, he will be the fifth place finisher. Of course, a big pot if he, if he were to win. Oh, he's yeah. right back in the game with 8 million. If Mustafa wins, then it very solidifies position in second. Philip thinks, where's the jack where you need it? <laughs> and a 6, 7, 10 flop, no help. Felipe does pick up back to a flush draw, but Mustafa Nine has a nine. higher club. 9 would be a nice hand card for Philip. Of course, yeah, he can make 8, Four 9. More outs. And that card makes oh. it interesting because he can now hit a 10 seven. or a 7 for a chop, ten. which I'm sure Felipe would take at this moment in time. He will take it any time. He don't mind which 10 or which 7. Surprise, surprise. And a queen will seal Felipe's fate. Unlikely to leave us in fifth place, but he will pick up 180,000 euros for his efforts. <laughs> not a bad day's work. Good game, bro. It's not bad to go out of any competition. You had the feel of hoodie at this final. Money like this. Now you see the smile on his face there, but all these players, as you, as you rightly said, they, they all want to win titles. The hand's coming out. And you have to be really careful to see which hand you're going to put your money on. Of course, we'll see with only four players at the table, you have to play a lot more hands, right? Oh, yeah. okay, so, uh, like, like they both have a great hand now because he hit second pair. <coughs> yeah, the, the Jack the Eight is feeling like, you know, the only card that beats him is a queen, actually. Yeah. So Timothy has limped in from the small Mustafa. Checked the big blind with Jack 8 suited. The flop is Queen 8 4. Timothy, top pair, Mustafa, second pair. And Timothy coming straight out betting. So there's obviously no way Mustafa can do anything here but call, right? Oh, he has indeed actually gone for a raise. That surprise you? It does surprise me because now he wants to know if he have a queen. Right. This is what he actually looking at. He. But he don't know if he have a better queen. So it's it like the decision he makes to find out now where he's at to get, if he calls, he gets a 
turn card. Right, he can check back the turn. And then he can have the river card as well. Okay, and of course, on a board like Queen 8, forward two diamonds, part of it, maybe protecting in case Timothy has a gut shot oh, you got or a lot over of, cards. A lot of cards that could give him a hand. Right. So, so it's a protection and also to, to see what's going on. And uh, an interesting a card there. That's a great card for Mustafa, actually. Not yeah. He gets the flush, but he's protected now against if he has a queen. Right. So you think uh, because he's raised, he can he can get this river for free? You think he's likely to check back here? Or, uh, or do you think maybe he knows he's up against the queen now, and now I need to, to bluff and try well, and get him off? If he's going to make a bluff, like acting like he has a king, like he has a diamond or mm -hmm. king jack in his hand or something, now he's going to go for the free ride. And it and that repeats kills the off. queen. <laughs> that didn't work. Well, obviously, a, a kind of unfortunate card from Mustafa, right? Because it makes it less likely Timothy has a queen when he can see two on the board and make, make him think his, his eight a little bit stronger than it was. And sometimes you put him in a bad spot by betting between you and the third person who's in the pot to squeeze play him, sure. to get him out or to let him get into danger. And Timothy with a, with a huge bet here, more than pot. Trying to maybe make it look like a buster draw. Yeah. Well, this is now, he puts him on the test to think about it. He, he knows he has the best hand. It's easy to see what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> because the cards are there. We know who's going to win. And of course, strategically as well, he knows if, if, he, if he were to call this pot, that in his mind, he's thinking, well, then I'd be chip leader, and if I win, and I have position on the other guy, maybe this, this, is, this is something that's going through his head. But on the flip side, if I call and lose, I give Timothy even, even more of my chips, he gets further ahead as the a chip leader. The flip side is when he fouled and he turns him over a bluff, <laughs> then you feel like, done. Ah, and he has here, here is the small percentage, I told you, that he will choose for, the lowest uh, stack of chips. You can still be in charge. Right. Yeah. And this is what I feel like when I see Michael playing. He, he looks like he's always in charge. Right. He's even. always leading. Okay. Somehow. So he's a very uh, like a, a strong player. He's very commanding. Yeah. So Timothy raising it up. Queen six suited. Tobias in the big blind with pocket eights. Alex to cool. And we will see a flop of. A6-5, well, huge flop for Timothy, a pair and a flush draw. Tobias still with the best hand in a pair of eights. He's got the better. And a decision for Tobias, when he does better, right? Because he can't just assume Timothy has an ace. Timothy's raising so many hands on the button that he has to check call, I guess. Yeah. And again, got a call. Timothy with a very small continuation bet. So Tobias thinking here what to, we know, we know he's not folding, so is he thinking maybe of raising sometimes here or just of calling? No, oh. he's gonna call it, yes. And he has? Acting like he has the ace himself. Or, you know, like this makes it better for Tobias. That's a much stronger Very hand. obvious. So now he feels like, okay, that's an improvement. If he had me beat already with the ace. It I still is, anyway. but, it's, but it's now there's less combinations of hands. That but if he would have nines or tens, can he really bet it out now against right. unknown? Because he do not already ate. So Timothy so himself... It, it makes the game very interesting. Timothy himself, of course, will I think his hands are very strong. Like, uh, aside from an ace, he would imagine he's probably ahead with his six, right? He probably doesn't give Tobias too many uh, pair combinations. Well, I have to give him uh, credit for calling. So he, he might be, be thinking he has an ace. Somehow. Yeah. So, so you'd expect him maybe to check back there. When he it, he act like he have an ace, which he don't have. His hand getting weaker and stronger, the way you look at it. He has he's bet. still he's put pressure on him. So he's gone for a half pot size bet. Yeah, because he got protection. That's the choice he make. Yeah. Um, Many um, players would check it now. And is, is yeah, and is this is, is part of this bet thinking he might be behind, but 
He doesn't expect Tobias necessarily to check race. If he does have an ace, he'll he'll just call, thinking yeah, Timothy might buff the river. So he gets to see his clubs. Because obviously he wouldn't want to bet clubs here and get raised and not get to see the river, right? So does he make this bet knowing Tobias won't raise him, even if he has the ace? Well, I like him the way he calls to bet still. And he will From his position, because he knows what Timothy is capable of. Right, doing. okay. And of course... Uh, but normally in any game, most of the time, nine out of ten times, the opponent falls in the position like this with sure. a medium pair. And now with 3.4 million in the pot, the river is a seven, and as you expect, now, he's gone check, check quickly. Yes. Tobias will win. Eight. Yeah. If you guys would like to see more Final Table highlights from the biggest events in the world, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications, as we do our best to provide highlights on a weekly basis. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the video. Well, this is interesting. Most of us played a lot of hands from the small blind, and he's, he's called with them so far. And he continues that strategy. It's good to see. You don't, you don't want to be just raising up with your good hands and limping with your bad hands. You'll get exploited. So because he's limping his other hands, he kind of has to limp this hand. Tobias, interesting. I would have expected him to raise with King Nine there, given the hands that Mustafa has limped. But luckily for him, he's uh, elected to check and not fall into the trap. But unfortunately for him, he has caught a piece of this board, and it's hard not to see him losing some chips here. And a half pot bet from Mustafa. Tobias, no real option here other than to call. And uh, too weak to raise, too strong to fold. He does indeed make the call. This pot is now 1.4 million. Yeah, it's a question of how strong he thinks Tobias is as to how much he can extract for these pair of jacks. Obviously, there was also the chance he can be behind. You wouldn't normally think on a board like this. There is, but Tobias just checked the big blind. So he can have hands like 10-4, 10-3, 9-4, 9-3. But yeah, Mustafa but has to play against his entire range, which he's well ahead of. He's going to get another 850,000. Yeah, he has, to, he has to call this one, really, and uh, at least see one more card. Fold the river is, a, is an option. Nine or a king note. Wow. Jack for Mustafa. It's actually a bad card for Mustafa, as crazy as it sounds. Uh, would, to us, it looks like he might have a hand like Queen Jack. Or It'd be interesting to see how much he bets. He bet half the pot, then he bet a third of the pot. Mm. Looks like two thirds pot this time. He bet 3 2 5 on the flop, 8 50 on the turn. And it's interesting because these guys have played quite a few pots. Small blind to big blind, limped, and Mustafa has. This is the first time he's taken this line of progression. Every other time he's checked the flop, so he does piece it all together. And a little bit fortunate, maybe, with that river. Didn't, it made the decision a lot easier. Oh, nice hand here, short handed. King, queen of spades. Oh, ace 10 for Mustafa. In the small blind. It's very rare that he three bets with the small blind. Usually just flats. They decide that uh, Timothy's raising too often here. Doesn't have to have a hand as strong as he has. Yeah, it's interesting. We haven't seen players really get out of the line yet. Yeah, it's going for the three bet here. And uh, there's no way Timothy would be folding this hand. Wow, look at this. <laughs> Had he flatted, Tavares would definitely have been seeing a flop with uh, Jack Queen of Clubs. This is, a, this is a small decision for Tobias there. Let's see. He can make an argument for four bet shoving. Yeah, probably what he's considering is that one of his cards could be dead. Oh, yeah, cool. But he obviously knows Mustafa's capable of, of three betting him like this thing. And this is definitely a position you do it in, leveraging the stacks. That's it. Let's see if uh, Tobias is going to wish that he had called with his Jack Queen of Clubs. Wow. Uh, there aren't too many hands that are three-bidding pre that are wild about that flop. This pot is already 4.4 million. Imagine if the ace of spades dropped on the turn. 
come on. So I'm going to have some vision. The Jack of Spades. Timothy over there with a decision here. He doesn't want to bet and get raised. I mean, he knows he can bet Mustafa off a lot of better hands if he does bet. But I think that, I think that's a good decision, checking back. And obviously turning top pair is not a bad idea. <laughs> Then went check, check. We are now on the turn. Timothy has improved to top pair and a flush draw. Check. And it does indeed go check now. So it's a toss up of betting or checking. Check. I, I, I prefer that option given the ICM considerations of, uh, of yeah. their two stack sizes. No, Mustafa has, in his opinion, only one option to try and win this pot. And that is put a bet in, which he's done. But it's only 900,000. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's not going to work in this case. Timothy will call. And retake the chip lead. It's going to be interesting to see how the other players react when they see the hands and the way they were played. They're going to be really surprised when he turns over King, Queen of Spades. As we see there on the graphics, Timothy back up to 18 and a half, Mustafa down to 13. So Mustafa raising it up. Tobias, 30 big blinds, a stroke off suit on the button. This is a spot, Simon, where I feel like you know he almost certainly has the best hand. But is it strong enough to three bet, call a four bet with? Probably not, especially when there's been no dynamic established so far of, of light three betting. So going for a call and we'll just uh, play some flops. Yeah. With this, we haven't seen light three betting yet. It, it allows players to open more hands. They're just not getting exposed. Jack would be a bit costly. And uh, a dream flop from Mustafa, top pair, backdoor flush draw. I'll go there. Yeah. It's too late. I'll do it next. Um, there's a call. Okay, so we can see here Mustafa continuation betting. Top pair. Tobias. This is obviously the problem with. Uh, it, it, I, I advocate what he did for that calling, but mm -hmm. you do get in these awkward situations now. You don't. Mustafa could have any of this. Tobias will make a call. See a turn card. Hoping that Mustafa was just. See better with a weak race or king queen. Wow, what a turn card. Tobias takes the lead. Mustafa improves to a flush draw. Yeah, I mean, I would have done the same as Tobias there. There's, you can't just give up on the pot. No. I think some of the reason that he didn't raise on the button is because he'd just seen. Okay. Mustafa lay down to a three bet for Michael, and uh, quite often players will get a bit stubborn. Yeah, it's just if he three bets, he doesn't know if he gets full bet, if it's a real hand or a bluff. It's just he plays a guessing game, and you don't want to guess for 800,000 euros. So on the flop, Mustafa went ahead with his jacket catching top pair. Tobias has caught up on the turn with the ace. If he bets, we know Mustafa's calling. It's a pair with a flush draw, could improve to two pair trips or a flush. And, and Mustafa with probably the more interesting decision on this street, having improved to a flush draw, decides to check. Feel like he probably feels like he's either way ahead or way behind. Uh, Tobias having a worse hand on the flop or an ace if he if he were to proceed. So check here, allow Tobias to allow Tobias to manage to chip back, oh, and that's a terrible card for him. Indeed. He's saving graces, obviously the. Well, he didn't any, bet the turn. <laughs> any, but any six any sixes are straight. Um, 
is something that, that may save him. He's left. He's, he's not like to put Mustafa on a, on a flush draw, on a flush at all, because okay. if Mustafa raised pre-flop, bet the flop, and improved the flush draw, almost certainly he's going to bet the turn. Mustafa's checked. And that's probably why Mustafa's doing this. He's praying somehow Tobias has a six. And then he, he's going to get a horrible check raise when he does bet. 2.6 million in the pot. He's counting it out. Oh, he's going big. Yeah. 1.5 million. It's a Christmas for Mustafa. He's he's trying to make it look like he's got a six or, or nothing. You know, there's there's not that many hands he can value bet with. Uh, Knows exactly what stack size Tobias has. I'm surprised. It's like he's piercing out slightly less than all in. 4.2 million. 4 million 200. Tobias just threw up a little bit in his throat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you surprised at that bet there? Do you not think it would have might. There's. Uh, there, I mean, the all in would have. Possibly work better for him. All in, I think, is the is the standard play there. But there's all sorts of stuff going on. Right. Uh, I, we don't know the history of these two players. I don't know how often they, yeah. you know, get in these situations. He's he's obviously trying to say something with the slightly less than all in. It could be saying, yeah. it could be trying to make it look fake stronger, trying to look at make fake yeah. weaker. We just, you know, it's not us to, to second guess someone like mm. a Mustafa. He's he's yeah, Italy's all-time money winner. And uh, over $10 million in live earnings. So at this stage now, Tobias has to re-piece the whole hand together, doesn't he? He has to now go through the whole hand. So what happened? He raised on the flop. I called on the button. He bet the flop. I called. I caught the ace on the turn. We, we both checked. Well, this the he's check-raised me on the river. What has he possibly got that... And, yeah. and I'll tell you what, he's gone through that, worked it all out very quickly, and that's why <laughs> these guys are sat playing a 50k super high roll. See, as you were saying, these players always always take a bit of time considering. You don't want to you don't want to give off too many timing tells mm. on all these spots. Here it goes. Sure enough, the double-handed. See, he's got a lot of chips, Simon. Yeah. So it's just all about. It's how all many about the volume. Right, okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, interesting spot. Very interesting. I can't. I can't, I can't Ask see him for folding. a count. Michael's got 6.9, Tobias has got 4.5. Yeah, he knows uh, Tobias. He'll, he'll be very aware that Tobias is shoving exactly the kind of hands he should top with 15 big blinds. These guys all, all know their their uh, shove ranges perfectly. And ace nine of clubs definitely falls into the cool here. So I imagine he'll well, probably he'll have a little... He'll, he'll go all in, won't he? Yeah, yeah, I mean, as, yeah, he'll, yeah, hand yeah, or play. He'll, he has to go all in. I think he'll have a little look at Timothy and see if he can pick up anything to see how interested he is, just in case. But he will be playing this. It's, it's not as clear cut as saying that some people will maybe watching will say, oh, Tobias well, is, is an even yeah. easier call because so Tobias. Michael has gone all in, as we expected. Now, Timothy hasn't really got a hand he can call with, so he folds. Tobias at risk here. His pocket sixes are in front at the moment. <laughs> this is for a pot that could. And wow, he's a. Uh, see there, Michael smashed it pretty hard. Tobias, though, backdoor, straight door, backdoor, flush draw, and he can still hit a six. Hmm? Here comes the turn. Mustafa, too busy eating his fish by the looks of it to really care what's going on. No improvement on the turn. That's pretty casual, isn't it, Simon? It's a, yeah. it's a 100k jump, and one guy's just eating his food, not even watching. <laughs> <laughs> six on the river, or we lose Tobias Siegler in fourth place. No, it's yeah. a king and fourth place for Tobias Siegler. He wins 260,000 euros and we are down to three. And at this point, I'm going to leave James in the capital hands of Jack Sinclair. He's going to join us. Jack, if you don't already know who he is, I'm sure he'll introduce himself. And uh, hopefully we'll have some great analysis during this shorthanded play. Bar saying it's the first time he's played on a, on a stream. And obviously talking, it is fun. And 
I know, I know for myself, and I'm, I'm assuming it's the same for you, when you come against people like Patrick Antonios in this final table, it's so exciting, right? We came through poker watching these guys just dominate. As much as you want to be like, oh, no, no one scares me, it's just it's something special about playing these guys, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, I, I like this comment, it feels like a video game. That's, that's certainly true. I, I, kind of, I kind of feel the same way, although I've never articulated it that way. So uh, now I have a new way to say it. <laughs> we're, we're assuming, and then uh, most of us see bet somehow flop top pair on the 6-4-3 board. Timothy with an open ender. We'll see a few options from here, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, call or raise both seem, seem fine in this spot. Uh, but, well, and obviously, he's assuming Mustafa doesn't hit that ball a lot of the time. What would you make of a, a raise size? You know, it's quite quite large, more than three x when he's check raising. Yeah, it is chunky. Um, I quite, I like the sizing. This is this is for sure Tim's board. And, and because of all this, does that make Mustafa sound that much stronger? He knows that Timothy knows that he shouldn't be betting this flop too often, and it hits Timothy more, so he can bluff more often. Or do we, do we put it down to Timothy actually having good hands and five, so the other buffs he might have maybe seven, eight? Yeah, well, I mean, Timothy's range here is going to be pretty balanced, and, you know, they both know that. And, you know, Timothy's just going to have a, a higher frequency of check raises on this board just because it, it hits him more. And yeah. Mustafa will have slightly less continuation bets. So that actually, this hand is somewhat low down in his value range for betting the flop. Like, Mustafa's also going to have all over pairs. Sure. Um, and, you know, I, I don't expect him to, to not be raising 5-7 suited on the, on the button. So, you know, all sixes, fours okay. and threes. Quite an interesting turn card here, right? Because Timothy, uh, although he's improved a pair, a lot of the hands he, he may be representing on the flop when he bluffs aren't going to want to bet this turn too often, right? No, it's... Uh, it's, uh, this is one of those tricky spots where, uh, you know, when, once there's a, a one-liner to a straight, and you know you put in put in the old check raise and got called it, you know you're kind of in a in a guessing game situation because Mustafa can have a lot of sevens as can Timothy so when you when you start to try and you know just pick your bluffs in this spot you know you need to think pretty pretty long and hard about who has more sevens in their range and you know sometimes sometimes the spot will will come up where you have way more sevens and sometimes your opponent will have way more sevens right and and, and you know when you have way more sevens you want to like put a lot of pressure on and when they have more you want to give up a lot right and this is a spot right where, t where timothy really doesn't have that many sevens pretty much five seven is the only one he has when he check raises the flop you say yeah he doesn't have too many he has seven eight a decent amount i don't i mean he might check raise sevens at some at some frequency, you know, it's it's a pretty strong hand on, on the flop, um, you know, and, but then again, it's a pretty good check call. So I think Mustafa probably has the more sevens in his range. Seven chip. Uh, but I, I imagine Mustafa will check back here. Yeah. One pair. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is Timothy's going to have like, well, it's kind of hard for him to have that many worse hands than a five. I guess he can check raise a three and a four. You, you have to do that stuff, right, when you're playing at this level. And maybe against weaker players, you can you can be a bit more uh, unbalanced. But playing these guys at this level, uh, they're just going to notice when you do stuff, right? So you have to... Yeah, I mean, partially that. And also sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes the situation just calls for, you know, calls for limping, you know, that due to ICM or... Right. So or Timothy, Timothy has pounced on it. I mean, at 1.1 million. Yeah, with the Queen 4 off. I mean, this hand's, you know, perfectly fine as a check back. Um, it kind of depends on, on your opponent's limping strategy. But, you know, I guess I guess Timothy just felt like this was the uh, the moment for a nice look there from Timothy. <laughs> so, wait, what? What's thought, going on here? We just, just had to two and a half in the last part. Now I'm in a raised pot with Queen 4 off. Yeah. Michael, of course, did call and has flopped middle pair. Timothy be slightly worried this board if he, know, he knows Michael's limping a lot of hands. Jack nine seven. Yeah, the J Jack nine seven definitely. Uh, you know, a very very wet connected board. You know, with all the middle cards. I mean, this board sort of hits every range, pretty pretty hard. Right. So t t Timothy's raising range as much as uh, Michael's calling range. Yeah, it hits his his raising range quite a bit, but you know that doesn't mean you can just just go after it because it also hits the calling range quite a lot. Right. So when you have 
such a whiff as as the queen four off. Um, I think it is it is a good idea to just give up. He might he might find a, a bet on this card. He's picked up a gutter and the king is definitely his card. Yeah, that's a that's a good card for him to, uh, to bluff at. Or maybe even hit a straight. Why not? Very deliberate, these guys. They're not. They're not wasting time. They're thinking so many different thoughts at each decision. Well, this is a tough spot level. for Timothy, actually. I mean, like sometimes Queen High is going to be good here. You know, sometimes. Um, and also, he needs to think about what he's going to do on on different river, rivers when he bets. Right. So as uh, we were talking with Marcel Lusk, we had him earlier. And he was saying it's almost like chess. These guys are thinking move after move ahead, and, and even hands in advance. If I do this this time, what can I do the next time? Kind of stuff. And he has elected to fire a bluff. Yeah, and the other thing to think about is the sizing on this turn. I mean, with such a connected board, if he has a king, he's going to want to bet pretty big. Um, right. So, so he's just kind of thinking like, what, you know, which hands make sense to to go big with and how big. You know, like you could conceivably bet like close to full pot here. And this this was a tough spot for Michael, right? Uh, no, Michael does pretty pretty clear check call here. Right, he can have a hand like king seven or. Yeah, king seven, king nine, king nine. Um, a seven, king jack even could check back the flop, although it's unlikely. Um, and then, you know, uh, ace king would be the other big one. And you know, maybe oh. even ace queen. Wow. Yeah, All I mean, this this, two x pots. This is pretty much like the nut hand to to do this with as well. He has a club, of you know, not a great one, but he has sure. a club, um, and he has a queen. So he blocks like two. You know, to, he blocks the snap calls, which is always good. You're right. Okay, and al and also Michael's hand. It also, yeah. th I should also point out this is a good board for Timothy to check back aces um, on the flop, just because you know where this board is gonna is gonna be really tough to play aces on if you get check raised. Okay. So if he had red aces, he might check back this flop, you know, so that he can call call. On like most runouts, obviously uh, a little bit less likely when Michael holds an ace, his blocks. Yeah, that's true. Only one combo. Of well, okay, so the same applies to kings as well. So yeah, sure, let, let's, let's oh, give, yeah, sure, give, sure. give four combos of <laughs> top and second set. Um, and yeah, obviously like the flush draws are, are there as well. This is uh, uh, this is a fascinating spot, and we haven't really seen anyone get a line yet. Um, and this is a this is a huge bet. Yeah, Michael calls. He, he, I guess he's thinking he's pretty much at the top of his range. <laughs> after he check, after he checks the turn, he just like doesn't have much better hands than this. Wow, and that's that's crazy. Timothy, who was our runaway chip leader, has just busted out in third place, running a huge bluff against Michael Zhang, who figured it out, made the call. So he will leave us in third place with 362,500 euros for his efforts. I know, he, looking at there, he looks pretty disappointed, and I'm, I'm sure at the start, of the final, he ran up to 20 million straight away. He must have been thinking he he would. Do much better than this, but a there would be if you're playing. You, you a, a big set's going to apply more pressure, right? If you're right, only playing 30 blinds. Yeah, once you're down to 30, like you're you're more vulnerable to three bets for sure because you you know you you can't really four bet fold. Right. Um, yeah. That being said, heads up. Uh, I believe they're not playing an anti now, right? But you're correct. So you you're a little bit deeper than you know you're you sort of play uh, enough you know. There's less money in the pot, is what I'm trying to say. So your your actually your s your stacked pot ratio is a little bit larger. So 30 big blinds heads up is a little bit more than 30 big blinds three-handed. Sure. And here, my was raised it up. Eight four of diamonds. Found a pretty gin flop for I his mean, hand. I mean, this is this is a big flop. Mustafa. Eight four of diamonds. Let's we'll see with the second pair. And I expect Mustafa to just check call here. The and he does. Jack knows his stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been making a lot of predictions. <laughs> You know, I think I'm about like 40% or something. <laughs> Some people have just tuned in. Yeah, if you, if you just you're tuned a genius. In, if you've just tuned in, my reads are on point at this point. Um, but yeah, there's some there's some merit to check raising this hand on the flop. All right, similar to, when, earlier, similar yeah. to when Michael himself check raised on the Jack 6 4 flop, right? Yeah, I wouldn't be so sure that Michael would check call with this hand uh, after what I'd seen before. But. I mean, you know, this this hand I think is just, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't benefit too much from check raising. Right. And Mustafa still continues in this spot, you think? 
Michael fires the second barrel. Yeah, I mean, this sounds too strong to give up at this point. I mean, he's still ahead for one thing. Does reach <laughs> down some chips. Makes the call. So this is a pretty big pot going now. 6.1 million already in there. Mustafa only has 10 million behind. And it is an offsuit ace. So this is an interesting spot for Michael. He's kind of got a not a great hand to bluff with, but then he does also have eight high. <laughs> so he does give up. And not that great hand to bluff with because he blocks straight draws and flush draws, right? So you heard it here. Jack Sinclair is a nit. I am, an, I am indeed a nit. He is not three betting you with five deuce off. Ha. Yeah, I'm actually in the commentary booth just, just uh, trying <laughs> to get action for... Or trying to get people to fold, you know? Like, He's here working hard. Repping that uh, that tight image. Someone so Michael hand. continues with nine deuce. Mustafa with a pretty strong hand on this flop. Second pair and a queen kicker. Yeah, uh, pretty good pretty good uh, hand to see bet with as well for Michael. He's got the backdoor flush, couple of the uh, backdoor straight draw, and a nine high. So uh, all signs point to bet. And of course, the, the nine being somewhat significant in blocking some of the hands and stuff I might continue with, right? Yeah. Eight, okay. nine, nine, ten, that sort of thing. Yeah, for sure. Nine, five. I hate that feeling. You bet the flop with nine high, you've got no pair, no draw. Your opponent calls. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't mind it too much when you have uh, the uh, heart draw coming on the turn. Like that heart draw. Yeah. I mean, because this hand is just really easy to play. So you know you're going to get called sometimes. So, and you know exactly what, what you're going to do on almost every turn. Right. He's not going to be in too many tough spots. Yeah. It's not like you're betting a six and do I continue betting? Yeah. If the turn card comes a seven or whatever, or a diamond, you just know, you just know your hand is a bad bluff. But if it comes a heart, you know your hand is a good bluff. So you don't really have any tough decisions on turns. So I, I don't mind that spot at all where you bet and they call and you have like a hand that's so easy to play. And here it comes a big sizing. 2.5 million in the pot. Michael has elected a bit 3.3 million. This puts Mr. Fur in a tough spot this hand, right? Yeah, this is tricky. Uh, well, he's, he's over bet, yeah? Yeah, he's over bet, yeah. 3.3 uh, okay. to 2.5. Yeah, I, I kind of like... I like the overbet on this kind of board, you know, where there's just loads of stuff going on, um, but there's no there's no like completed hand, and the jack doesn't interact too heavily with Mustafa's check call range, so you know all the draws are still draws here. Right. So Mustafa's you know only really strong hands are like sets of sixes and sevens, which are going to check raise the flop a lot, and then two pair, which is going to be you know jack seven jack six and king jack, which also might check raise the flop a lot. So Mustafa has not a lot of very strong hands here and loads of strong draws. So it's a spot where you really want to overbet with your strong hands and you can put uh, a lot of hands in a lot of, you know, under a lot of pressure with right. your bluffs. Especially when it's the backdoor flush draw, right? Because he's not blocking Mustafa, maybe flopping a flush right, draw. Right, exactly. That, is, that as well. So, so, yeah, this is a really good spot to bet big and uh, I like it. Does, it. it does work. So it's Mustafa's go to open up. And presumably get three bet here. And yep, Michael with a real hand. Okay, so Mustafa has not a bad hand to continue with, right? I, I'd be very surprised if Mustafa folded to a three bet in this spot. Um, I think stacks are a bit too deep for the for an all-in here from Mustafa. Right. But he's not got a bad hand for it. In you know, it's uh, you know seven six two plays okay as a as an all-in. You know, it does well against the top of people's ranges because it's super, it's always live against uh, sure. you know ace king ace queen, etc. And you know does it does a decent job of uh, of cracking aces and such. Always seems to when they've got it against me. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, Mustafa has called, so we have five point four million in the pot. But yeah, I mean this hand is just like good enough that you can just call. And oh wow. He has flopped a gut shot. Michael has one of the best flops you could see. Queen 5-3. Top pair, top kicker. This could spell a bit of a trouble for Mustafa, could it not? Yeah, he has... Uh, he's flopped something. It's not a great flop for his hand. It's, it's like, decent. Um, and Michael with a very small bet. 
1.4 million. Yeah, in a normal situation, this isn't a bad hand to, to raise in a three bet pot. Um, you know, like, you're not like ecstatic about your, your gutter. Right. You have uh, dirty outs with uh, anything, you know, a club coming. Um, but that being said, like, you know, it's just a board where you're not really going to want to raise too much oh. in general. Right. You know, there aren't many value hands you're raising on this board. That's what yeah, you're exactly. getting at. So it's yep. hard to, when, you're, when you're bluffing, you're hard to represent something. Okay, well, we'll see an eight. So Mustafa improves to an open ender. And a second flush draw has appeared. Yeah, tricky spot to play here for Mustafa. Pretty easy spot to play for Michael. <laughs> I mean, I guess with the stacks as they are, like, kind of a good spot to to even check raise all in for Michael. Right. Get you know. I yeah, mean, in in Michael's spot, obviously you're using check raise is, is an option. If he is going to bet, what sort of bet size would you favour here? So about three and a half, yeah. something like that. He's gone three point seven, right? Three million seven hundred. Yeah. So, yeah, that's about right. He has indeed. Mm. And is there, is there any consideration for Mustafa maybe? You know, jamming here, or is that a little too thin? Uh, it's it's certainly an option that he could take. the The problem here is like Mustafa has just loads and loads of hands that he's gonna, that are loads of bluff hands here. That when he has no no club and like no clubs or diamonds, I mean this is a kind of low down in his in his uh, draws. Right. You know, like I mean, he can have the nut flush draw here. Two, you know, two different nut flush draws. It's possible. Right. So you'd, you'd rather use those, in this, especially as they block good hands, having an ace in hand to, as, as your bluffs than a seven high. Yeah, I'd be more inclined to. Uh, I mean, also, I mean, you can also have a combo draw. You know, a bunch of combo draws here. Uh, four, six diamonds, six, six, seven of diamonds, and you know the maybe nine, ten of clubs, or jack ten of clubs that that call flop. So all of these hands are much better jams. It's kind of really ugly for him because this hand's like kind of a. Uh, it's really tough to fold this hand on the turn. But then it's also like not a very good. Uh, he is reaching for trips. He has. Oh. That is a pulled. call. So we have a huge pot going into the river. 12 million. Oh, sorry. 15.7 million chips. Mustafa with only 9.6 back. But yeah, I, I don't know. I'm probably inclined just to. Like to, to actually fold this hand on the turn. Although I, don't, I know it's a bit nitty. And the river is the ten of clubs. Does but not improve Mustafa. Michael yeah. here, did you, you prefer a jam, a check call. What's his, what's his line? Does he does he think Mustafa has many flush draws when he calls the turn? I mean, he does. Mm -hmm. Michael oh. going for max value, but Mustafa just has the seven high. So Michael with a huge lead now. 37 million to Mustafa's 10 million. 1 million? 1 million? Michael raising up Mustafa with a real hand. Now, this one's got to be all in. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he didn't take the ASA off, so I don't know what to pay for these days, but, but I mean, this hand is like a slam dunk. Yeah, 23 big blinds. Mm -hmm. There he goes. And I imagine he's going to call. 11 and a half? 11 and a half, 12, yeah. 11 and a half. Uh, so okay, I can see. I can see. This is this is fairly close, right? Uh, I think it's cool. Oh. Yeah. And he has indeed called. So Mustafa at risk. Michael five cards away from winning the super high roller. Classic coin flip. Couldn't be any more. 50-50. Spot on. Of course, if Mustafa were to double up here, it'll be very even. Who are you? Who are you rooting for? I am rooting for nobody. Okay. <laughs> a four Ooh. deuce deuce flop, two Ooh hearts. Wee. So, Michael has missed, but he's also kind of hit, staying pretty much at 50-50. He will need a king, a ten, or a heart to eliminate Mustafa and win this tournament. Mustafa, <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad flop. Well, at least you can't get counterfeit. Uh, there is an ace. Mustafa looking a lot nicer now. So, king, ten, 
or Hart. Otherwise, Mustafa will double up and we will go back to even stacks in this heads up match. <laughs> They're both yeah, players feeling moment. the pain. Here he comes. Hey. It is a brick. Mustafa will Not double enough. up. The players are now pretty even. More action. Michael's double shot up. at glory. Or well, first shot at glory. 1.1. And sure enough, we, we may well see a return to the you know, button raises standard. Yeah. Although he's, he's, he's added an extra 100k than when he was uh, playing against Mustafa's shorter stack. Right. So just over a min. Mustafa takes the lead. Michael with the second pair. Okay. Looks like there'll be some chips down this pot. Yeah, pretty good spot for Michael to check back, though, on this exact board. Just as loads of stuff going on, and your hand is, you know, medium. It's mediocre. So you definitely, you know, this board kind of encourages you to check back quite a lot. And imagine Mustafa will go for a value bet here. He, his hand's not good enough to check raise. And, uh, you know, yeah, but it's definitely good enough to bet for value. Right. And, of course, he doesn't want to check and allow another diamond to come up for free, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't really want your opponent to, to check back a lot. And as we were saying earlier, Michael's turn betting frequently, turn betting frequency seems a little low to me. Just, you know, obviously uh, yeah. small sample size. but As you were alluding to earlier. So, six million in the pot going to the river. Michael obviously has no decision on the turn. And another diamond. Yeah. But Mustafa two pair from stuff. I imagine pair. he'll just check and, and just close his eyes and calls okay. and call if well, Michael, Michael were to bet. But I don't think Michael will bet. Because right. um, Mustafa's going to check call with so many diamonds and, and he, he has showdown value right with his nine. Yeah, the nine's one of his. I mean, he's not checking back the flop with a jack, you know, very frequently at all. So, in terms of one pair of hands, this is like close to the top. Um, well, he is reaching yeah. for chips. Is this a, I might be ahead, I might be behind, but I can definitely make some better hands fold move? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> ah, Mustafa yeah. folds, okay. It does. He it's a big bet. That is a big Six bet. Six million. showing no signs of slowing down. But ace-nine suited on the button. Michael, pair of fours in the big blind. As you saw in the last graphic there, million, you're now playing 36 bigs effective. All in. OK, wow. interesting. Mustafa limped. Michael, all in. And this is what I was saying earlier, that a lot of players just have a massive amount of uh, twos, threes, and fours when they go for the big all-ins. Right. I mean, is Mustafa looking at this thinking, there aren't really any hands that are going to dominate me? Does he expect to be jammed on by Ace-10 plus? And, uh, Ace-10 and Ace-Jack off specifically um, might be in this range. This is, a, this is a real decision. Yeah, this is a very tough spot. And he has called. Uh, he's gone for it. So for the second time, we are all in in a flip for the title. Michael with the chip lead will win if his pocket falls can defeat the Ace-9. If not, Mustafa will take a commanding chip lead for the first time in this heads-up play. Queen, five, seven, one spade. That'd be pretty, pretty gross. Mustafa not looking quite as happy as the last time. Turn, ten of diamonds. Changes nothing. Mustafa will need to hit an ace or a nine. Here's the river. The queen of spades, wow. Michael Zhang, is our winner of the 50k super high roller. Here in Rosvedov. Second place, Mustafa Kanit. A valiant effort. Good game. It was a fantastic game, fantastic match. We saw some, some pretty uh, pretty fun poker. Yeah. Michael's three bet on the with Ace Eight on the seven five deuce flop, probably the highlight for me. Poker. I can't promise it'd be on the same levels we just seen from Michael Zhang and Mustafa Kanit in that fantastic heads match heads up match. Michael Zhang, winner, eight hundred thousand euros. Mustafa Kanit second for five hundred.